This was my uncle's shop apron. I say was because we lost him unexpectedly in 2018. He was an avid woodworker and wood turner in particular. He loved making gifts for people in his life. A few months after he passed, my aunt texted me and asked me to take his lathe and continue my own woodworking journey. Along with it, she also gave me his shop apron, which was still full of chips from his last turning. Over the past two years, I've used this apron every day, until a few weeks ago when the neck strap suddenly broke. The webbing got brittle and frayed, causing catastrophic failure. Of course, when this happened, I was always going to find a way to fix it. Buying a new one just didn't seem right. My uncle was a doctor by trade, but I've always known him as a maker as well. Whether that was wood turning, building remote controlled airplanes, screen printing, or yeah, even sewing. He was always challenging himself to learn something new, a trait I really admire and try to embody in my own life. After removing the remaining strap material, I had to make a decision. I could repair the apron to exactly how it was before, or I had this opportunity to change it to match my own way of working. I finally decided on the latter. I think that's what my uncle would have done too. Makers make things to fit their lives. For me, the neck strap makes the apron uncomfortable to wear for long periods of time, especially if it's loaded with tools. So the first improvement I wanted to make was to change the straps to cross over my back and distribute the weight on the shoulders instead of the neck. I also wanted to add some leather grommets to the hip areas to protect the apron from the strap. So I quickly cut out a couple kidney shapes from this scrap of buffalo hide. I sewed them onto the apron where I estimated the straps would land. Honestly, I just guessed on the placement. And again, please don't spend too much time looking at these awful stitches. I'm a woodworker, not a sewer. And I'm a woodworker because of my uncle. I will always remember as a high schooler turning pens and wine stoppers in his shop for Christmas gifts. His passion really stuck with me and encouraged me to find my own passion for woodworking. But looking back, I see the influence he and my aunt had on me was way broader than that. The burned copy of Photoshop 4.0 that he gave us helped develop my love for digital imagery that launched my career. His 1986 Camry was my first ever car, handed down to me after he purchased a new car. And now, it's his lathe that my sons and I turn on. Using a knife, I split the grommet and the apron material behind it to accept the straps. Another upgrade I wanted to make at this time was to further divide the upper pockets. Big pockets just allowed my tools to fall out when I bent down to pick something up, so I wanted to fix that for good. A couple seams created a few pockets for my ruler, a carpenter's pencil, and a square. I decided not to make any changes to the bottom pockets because I don't turn as much as my uncle did, so I don't get as much sawdust in there. I remember the first time I emptied out the pockets. There must have been a quart of sawdust and chips in them. It honestly was kind of ridiculous. For the straps, I bought this replacement nylon webbing at the fabric store, but it hadn't been sealed to prevent it from fraying. After searching for a lighter, I settled on some matches. It was a little toastier on my hands, but it got the same result. And by the way, this is so satisfying. I sewed the straps on the apron, and thankfully I used matching threads so you aren't able to see the awful stitches. But actually, I just thought of these stitches as practice for later. I wanted to cover the ends of the straps with a square of buffalo hide. I'd actually thought about folding over a piece of leather before sewing the straps on, but ultimately decided that was way too much for my sewing needle to go through, so I finally decided on a single square over the top for now would take care of it. 
I carefully stitched these seams since the thread would now contrast with the leather and honestly, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out. I like how the apron is hanging over the shoulders now, so I moved on to the final steps. I wanted to add a leather piece to keep the straps in place, so first I had someone draw the outline of the straps on my back on a scrap piece of paper. I cut another scrap of buffalo hide, then drew a pleasing rough shape on the paper template. I sliced the template where the straps would run through the keeper, then transferred those lines to the leather with a marker. I like this tip because it allows you to get a perfect transfer to the leather. I punched the end of each slit with a leather punch to protect the seams from opening up further. I can't remember exactly how much this punch was, but I have a really inexpensive one linked below if you're looking for one. Also, don't use plywood as a backer board for punching. I had to dig plywood circles out of my punch afterward, which was not a lot of fun. I used a knife to make the strap openings. I just took light passes until I was all the way through the leather. I don't really have a lot of specialized leather tools, so I just kind of make things work with what I have in the shop. Then I cut the keeper to its final shape with a pair of scissors. Stringing it up. And taking it for a test drive. Off camera, I sewed one side of the buckle in place and left the other side adjustable. With that, the apron was done and ready to reload. Thank you so much for watching this one. It was pretty special to share a little bit about my uncle with you. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button and leaving a comment letting me know. If you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do that as well, but no pressure. You can check out more of my shop projects right here, and I'll see you on the next one.